All right, so Rohit, it's a pleasure to have you here at GMIC this year. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, so I think um, due to Snapdeal's $5 billion valuation, I think most people in this room are uh, familiar with Snapdeal, <clears throat> but they don't really necessarily grasp exactly what you guys are doing beyond e-commerce. So sure. I'd like for you to just start out by introducing Snapdeal to sure, us. Sure, fantastic. Thanks a lot. You know, uh, for us, uh, both me and my co-founder Kunal, both of us started the company back in 2010. And when we started the organization, we actually started with a business which was a coupons business, uh, you know, where we had restaurant coupons, salon coupons, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I don't know for, for whoever remembers, uh, mid-2010 was the time in the world where couponing was super mm -hmm. hot. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in India as well, within, within a few months of launch, there were 50 funded players in the market all doing the exact same thing. So for the first 18 months, we were building only that business. Uh, by the end of 2011, we had 70% market share in that space. Mm -hmm. And you know, interestingly, then many of our investors used to tell us that, hey, you guys should go to China and see what's going on there. We had, half of them had not gone themselves, but that's a different story. Uh, so one fine day we said, hey, you know, we hear so much about China and internet and what's happening there. Let's just buy tickets and land in China. And what we saw there was absolutely mind-blowing. We, we were not sure what we were looking for. We just went to China just to see what's happening in internet there. Mm -hmm. uh, so we met all sorts of companies, companies in couponing, flash sales, uh, e-commerce, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And what was fascinating to us was the sheer size of Chinese e-commerce market and how fast it had grown. Mm -hmm. You know, back in India, end of 2011, you know, e-commerce was still very, very small. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, what we found very interesting was uh, that still there were so many similarities between China and India. You know, I remember we were talking to one of the investors in China, and he said, uh, in China, in uh, early 2000s, you know, organized retail was almost non-existent in China. So uh, organized retail started taking off in early two, 2000s. And then real estate prices went through the roof. Uh, and hence, organized retail could mm -hmm. not take mm -hmm. off. And then you had a situation where there was this massive fragmented supply, uh, which didn't have access to the right distribution. Mm -hmm. And on the consumer side, you had all these millions of consumers who wanted to get access to all these great products, but again, there was no medium mm -hmm. because there's no organized retail. And that's where companies like JD and Alibaba mm -hmm. came in mm -hmm. and you know, helped connect the two. And this opportunity was exactly the same in India. 8% uh, of India's retail is organized, whereas I think that number would be probably 80 to 90% in mm -hmm. the US. Mm -hmm. And that was a massive opportunity in mm -hmm. India. So we went back home, you know, we were not in that business, we didn't understand any of that. We huddled with our team, we said, hey, you know, we have a decent brand, good traffic, uh, decent team. Uh, theoretically speaking, if we allow, attach a lot of merchants and assortment to it, transactions should happen and business should do well. And that's what we started doing early 2012. We started building uh, a marketplace for businesses to mm -hmm. sell directly to consumers, mm -hmm. uh, new products, kind of similar to if, some, if people are familiar with Tmall, uh, which is Alibaba's business. Mm -hmm. So we started building that. And within six months, that business started growing so fast that our original coupons business started looking like a distraction in front of it. Mm. So we shut down that business mid of 2012, started focusing only on building a products marketplace. Mm. As of today, we have uh, 200,000 merchants on our platform uh, which, who are selling on an average around $4 billion of goods every year. Mm. And it's growing pretty fast. So, you know, I think right now it's growing at about 300% year on year. Okay, amazing. Yeah. So it's an uh, exciting time to be in India. It's really interesting that kind of China, going and looking at China helped you develop yeah. your next stage of business. Um, so tell us, how are, is Snapdeal innovating mm -hmm. in the e-commerce space mm -hmm. in India? What, what are you doing that's unique? Okay. So, you know, uh, one of the very interesting things about being in India, you know, uh, many people ask us, how is it like to be in India? And the way I think, or the way we think about India is that, you know, the infrastructure is probably similar to what was uh, in the 60s in the US or maybe earlier. Okay. Uh, the market opportunity okay. is that of China in the 2000s, mm -hmm. where internet, you know, there's about 250 million internet users, etc. But the technology is on par with everywhere else everywhere in the else. world, which is 2015. Mm -hmm. And that's a very interesting space to be in where there's lack of infrastructure, market opportunity is large and becoming more sizable, but all the modern technologies are available. Mm -hmm. 
and you know in many ways uh, it creates a differentiation of how commerce and internet businesses get built in india mm -hmm. uh, if you look around the world most commerce businesses across the world whether it's the us or china were built at a time when the pc was the dominant uh, you know uh, platform to access internet mm -hmm. whereas when it's happening in india it's happening all on the mobile mm -hmm. over uh, over 75% of our transactions happen on the mobile oh, yeah. device on a small yeah. screen device and we don't count tablet as a mobile device yet okay. so 75% okay. uh, is just small screen devices and that that changes a lot of things because we feel strongly you know that when most commerce platforms developed across the world they were these large monolithic platforms where you had all the categories all of them in one mm -hmm. one platform uh, payments product is again in the same platform etc mm -hmm. etc whereas in a 4 inch 4 inch world uh, you know you need to have single use case uh, you know a constellation of single use case products mm -hmm. which are interconnected with each other mm -hmm. and that's how we are evolving snapdeal so with snapdeal as a company we have the core product which is snapdeal which has all these merchants on one side and you know consumers mm -hmm. buying on the other side in addition to that we recently uh, acquired a company called freecharge which is a bill payments and utilities company mm -hmm. using which we launched a, a payments product which mm -hmm. is a different product, which is not a part of Snapdeal. It's a mm -hmm. different product, but connected to Snapdeal. And you know, within within eight days of launch, we hit a million users on that platform. It's mm -hmm. growing that fast. Okay. And then the third platform we launched is a C two C product, where you know, again, it's become far easier for consumers to sell online today because mm -hmm. you know, with your mobile phones, you can click a photo and start selling a product in five mm -hmm. seconds. Whereas in the PC world of marketplaces, you know, you know, you have to click a photo figure out how to mm -hmm. put it on your PC and then okay. start selling. And it's, it's growing like crazy. Uh, it's been uh, 12 weeks since we launched our C2C platform. We already have 20,000 shops in mm. 12 weeks and half a million listings on the platform. Okay. So we feel, you know, the way it's developing in India, it's, uh, is a it's a constellation of single use case products but connected to each other. Mm, okay. It's a very interesting time. Okay. And so you guys just raised uh, your last round. Uh, your lead investor was Alibaba. Yes. So how, does it, how is it going to change things to have Alibaba in your corner? Absolutely. So, you know, uh, uh, a little bit of history about our company. In the last one year, we've raised close to a billion dollars uh, from investors like SoftBank, Alibaba, and Foxconn. And uh, it's, you know, it's obviously very interesting for us to have these investors on board. Uh, you know, they're obviously very knowledgeable about how marketplaces are mm -hmm, run, mm -hmm. how payments are run. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and as a result, I think, you know, we spend a lot of time with the Alibaba folks and it's, it's a great learning opportunity for us mm -hmm. because we'll end up making far fewer mistakes uh, on our path to becoming mm -hmm. a large company. Uh, while at the same time, it's, it's important for us to also make sure that while we are learning from them, mm -hmm. but we need, we are, we are the people on the ground in India and we need to figure out what's mm -hmm. right for India. Okay, okay. And so does Snapdeal have aspirations beyond India, uh, specifically internationally? Sure. So India's a, India's a very, India's at a very interesting time right now mm -hmm. as a market. It's already the second largest internet market in the world in mm -hmm. terms of number of internet users. It's growing very fast. You know, uh, right now, India's overall consumption is probably a trillion and a half or so dollars. Mm -hmm. Over the next 10 years, that consumption is going to be close to three and a half trillion dollars. Mm -hmm. And we feel, you know, we don't think of ourselves as playing a part uh, only in retail consumption in India. We think of ourselves as playing a role in moving the overall consumption in India online. Mm -hmm. And it'll be fair to expect uh, in the next five to 10 years uh, of this three and a half trillion dollars of consumption, about 10% of it to be could be easily digital, which means mm -hmm. it's a you know, $350 billion market. Mm -hmm. uh, and as a result, I would say that for a while, we're going to be heads down focusing on this market yeah. and making sure we are, uh, we are tapping into the $350 billion opportunity. Okay. That's understandable. Um, so from where I sit uh, in Silicon Valley, uh, and also spending a lot of time in China, there is a lot of excitement about the Indian market right mm -hmm. now. Uh, excitement as a startup center, excitement of it being... Um, uh, a country that uh, many other international companies should be targeting. Mm -hmm. um, do you think this this hype is, is overhyped or is it justified? I think it's absolutely maybe uh, maybe underhyped, if not mm -hmm. justified, okay. uh, to say the least. Because you know uh, what's happening in India is that the market is growing very very fast. You know, 
I remember two years back, 5% of our transactions used to be on mobile devices, mm -hmm. 5%. Mm -hmm. Within 24 months, it's 75%. And this is, not, uh, this is not because people left their PC and started using a mobile mm -hmm. phone. This is because people never had internet access. And now because of the advent of devices at low, low price points, mm -hmm. you know, starting from $60, $70, so many more people have access to the internet. And once they are connected, then they're doing a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And as a result, this market is massive. You know, even today, even though I think uh, there are 250 million internet users, there are 1.25 billion people in India, mm -hmm. and this is still just 25% of our population. Mm -hmm. okay. And as of today, 800 million people in India are below the age of 35. So India is a pretty young country, and mm -hmm. you know, I, I would say anyone who's not looking with a microscope, microscope at India is definitely missing out on something big. Interesting, interesting. Um, this year there is three times more venture capital uh, investing going on in the, than there was a year prior. Yes. Um, one of the uh, prolific uh, Silicon Valley investor, Vinod Kosala, recently said that valuations in India are, are, are too high and specifically called out SnapDeal and Flipkart on this. Okay. Uh, what's your response to kind of uh, <laughs> VC money too easy in India? Sure. So uh, if you think about it, you know, we, we, we started the company, by the way, back in 2007, and, you know, mm -hmm. we launched a snap deal in 2010. And we've seen, seen, like, we've been around for a few years, and we've seen how things were like back in 2008, when, again, I think there was the same prediction that, you know, the market's going to the dogs. Mm -hmm. uh, and similarly, uh, again, it happened in 2012, when everyone had the perception that, hey, the market's not going to happen. We have a far longer term view of our business and the country. Mm -hmm. Over the, let's just, it's important for, to, for all of us to first make up our mind that over the next 10 years, the next 20 years, is India going to be a very large market or not? Uh, let's first need to decide that. Mm -hmm. We feel very confident that it will be a very large market. Mm -hmm. Hence, it's, it's very clear to us that over the next 10 to 20 years, very large businesses will get built in India. You know, People talk a lot about unicorns these days. Mm -hmm. I think India will have dozens of decacons, if not mm -hmm. anything else. But will there be bumps on the way? Absolutely. Uh, should companies be prepared for those bumps on the way? Again, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Because you know, investing goes through this, this interesting cycle we've seen in the last seven, eight years, is that uh, when some companies start doing well, everyone starts getting very excited mm -hmm. that, you know, hey, so many things are happening. And as a result, many investors will start funding the seventh or the eighth or the twelfth player in the same space. And then suddenly, in a few years, it gets to a point where someone asks the question that, hey, do I really think that the 15th player in this same space is going to generate a meaningful business or not? And then every, every, the in, emotion for everyone goes downhill, mm -hmm. and then people start questioning even the player number one and player number two. Mm -hmm. And then it goes back up again. So it's, mm -hmm. it's a little bit cyclical, cyclical. that way. Mm -hmm. uh, but if, as long as you're building the right business, you're building like a number one, number two, number three player in your, uh, your category, you're being mindful of how you spend money and have a long-term view on the business. Mm -hmm. I, think it's, uh, I don't think it's overvalued. You know, I think over the next five to 10 years, all these businesses are the businesses that do well are mm -hmm. going to be at least five to ten times of what they presently are sized okay. at. You mentioned a minute ago about uh, people's views of India in 2012. I actually uh, moderated an India panel at, at GMIC Beijing in 2012. It had five high, uh, tech leaders on the panel, and actually two of them now have billion-dollar companies mm -hmm. uh, in India. And, uh, but all of them in 2012 said unanimously that India's market was not ready for prime time. They said smartphone, 3G penetration was not growing fast enough. Mm -hmm. They said it was too hard to start a company, start a, start a startup. And they said that carriers had way too much power. Mm -hmm. What has happened since 2012 to grow all these huge, successful companies? Absolutely. And that's, that's how uh, unpredictable things can be. Mm -hmm. That, you know, sitting back in 2012, even if someone asked us, what do you think you know uh, the internet landscape three years out will look like we would have said okay you know maybe there'll be few more pcs mm -hmm. i remember back in 2000 uh, 2013 when five percent of our transactions were on the mobile we set up this special team that you know hey let's focus on the mobile let's make sure a lot of new users are coming on the mobile and let's make sure we win this market so we gave them this audacious target that you need to be 25% of our overall business in two years. Mm. And look where we are. We are at 75%. And, 
and all that's happening because you know sometimes with these very large markets you don't know when the tipping point comes mm -hmm. i think that tipping point came in india a year year and a half back mm -hmm. when the price of mobile internet became cheap and more importantly when the devices became cheap you know suddenly the device it's no longer you don't no longer need to have a thousand dollars to get a smartphone device mm -hmm. you can get one for a hundred dollars and suddenly a much larger market opened up uh, mm -hmm. coming online which okay. I don't think any of us predicted. Even if, mm -hmm. even if I was on the GMIC panel in Beijing, I would have said, said the same, same thing. thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, once you're on the ground and you're dealing with such a large market, it will be unpredictable. It will surprise you. But as long as you're ready for it, mm -hmm. you know, good things will happen. Amazing. Okay, so as you know, um, Prime Minister Modi has been in Silicon Valley this yes. week. I was actually um, a part of the delegation. Okay, <laughs> That's and what I'm um, and he he had, he had a town hall meeting with Mark Zuckerberg. He's been talking a lot about his Digital India mm -hmm. Initiative. Can you tell us a little bit about that and how you sure. see that? Sure, absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, uh, if you go back in time, the the relationship between Silicon Valley and India is not a new thing. You know, even back, back 30 years back when Silicon Valley, Valley was being created and new companies were coming up, there were a lot of Indian folks who moved to the Valley and were an important part of creating mm -hmm. the Silicon Absolutely. Valley. And then over the last 10, 15 years, so many companies from the Valley have already been investing in Indian companies. Mm -hmm. You know, I come here, I think we have like a half a dozen investors who are based in the Silicon Valley mm -hmm. and they've been good friends and investors in our company for the last few mm -hmm. years. And for, the, for a long period of time, there's been a very strong relationship already in place between the Valley and India. What is great and you know, what is very positive for all of us sitting in India as well, is that it's great that the government is actually taking notice of the mm -hmm. fact that there's such a strong relationship. Mm -hmm. And our Prime Minister himself is actually coming to acknowledge the fact that, hey, there's a strong relationship between the Valley and India. Let's keep that going and acknowledging it and you know, saying, hey, we are here to help mm -hmm. you make it even better. Uh, and he's a, he's a visionary, you know, I, yeah. I mean, you know, the task that he has at hand is not small. Mm -hmm. By any, I mean, we call ourselves ambitious and audacious. I think he's, he's Far more. 10x, mm -hmm. 10x more mm -hmm. ambitious and audacious than us mm -hmm. in his goal mm -hmm. uh, of Digital India. And mm -hmm. his goal of Digital India is actually very simple if you crystallize it. His goal is we should have a paperless India when it comes to government. Mm -hmm. And you know, like right now in India, there's a lot of paperwork for small things. You want to uh, file your taxes, you know, get a certain license, etc. You know, mm -hmm. these small things, they're not hard, but it, they're, they're slow, mm -hmm. relatively. And his vision is that he's imagining India in a way that everything should be digital, even the government. Mm -hmm. And we should make it very easy for people to do business, whether it's filing, creating a company, mm -hmm. filing taxes, getting some licenses, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. it's, going, it's going to take a few years to move. But I think unless we have that vision, nothing yeah. will happen. Exactly. And he's very passionate about it, which is, which is fantastic for companies like mm -hmm. us. It's going to Absolutely. make doing business in India mm -hmm. even easier. easier. Okay. So I think we have time for one very last quick question. I think there are many people in the, in the audience today that are thinking about expanding their businesses or sure. their investment. Um, into India, what advice do you have for them? It is a huge opportunity, but there are Absolutely. probably a lot of pitfalls. So yes. what advice do you have for them? In terms of the, in terms of the market size in India, it is, it is humongous. You know, uh, you, just for our own company, we're projecting that over the next five years, uh, we should have 10 million merchants on our platform. We should have $50 billion of transactions moving through our platform. Wow. And we are not going to be all the market. The market is far, far larger than mm -hmm. that. So as a result, the market in India is very large, but at the same time, it's very unique. Mm -hmm. Many of the principles that apply here do not apply the same way mm -hmm. in India. For example, the, you know, the supply chain and physical infrastructure in India is very early and you know, one would argue it's to some extent broken. Mm -hmm. And as a result, you do need physical, India is definitely a market you should be going to, but uh, the same principles that apply here and you know, running the business in India, sitting out of here will probably be a hard thing. So I would, I would strongly recommend for everyone to definitely be mm -hmm. in India, but come visit India, see what's going mm -hmm. on and have someone local in mm -hmm. India partner with you to walk through all the things. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. many things like supply chain infrastructure is broken, so you need to do things to build that out. Payments infrastructure is very early, mm -hmm. you know, even right now, 60, 65% of the market is cash, cash on delivery. Now, when you talk, to, talk about that number to people here, 
I know people get freaked out because, you know, how do you handle so much cash? cash. But what's important to notice is that uh, because the market is like that, the capability to handle all of those things mm -hmm. are actually f getting built out fairly smoothly in India. So while we think it's not a great thing, but there are there are e solutions to it. So mm -hmm. we don't we are not losing sleep every day thinking that mm -hmm. hey why is why is sixty percent of the market cash? In cash. So mm -hmm. it's it's a uh, it's a large market. It's a challenging market, mm -hmm. and it's a very diverse market which requires a lot of local knowledge. So I would I would encourage everyone to definitely come to India, mm -hmm. but come and partner with companies which are local there so that you understand. Uh, mm -hmm. the consumer psychology there, mm -hmm. which is very different from the U.S., I would okay. say. Far more similar to China, different from the U.S. Okay. Well, it's been our pleasure to have you. Thank you so much. A lot of great advice for the audience. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.